This video will just be covering the Corruption and Ascension expansion for It's a Wonderful World. For tips on the base game and general beginner strategy, watch the previous video here. This guide will assume you are playing with Empire Side B. The Corruption and Ascension expansion adds a lot more variety to It's a Wonderful World. It includes many new cards that have unbelievable production, as well as cards that make nearly any build viable through enticing multipliers. The key to a good score is having these multipliers overlap over a common colour card or character token. This score of 170 is possible thanks to all these multipliers based around yellow cards. As long as it's paired with a black and blue card, each yellow card is essentially scoring 25 points. This is a dream setup. Although 170 is abnormally high, aiming to score 90 plus each game is a more realistic goal that will still win you a large percentage of games. Let's go over three of the best colour combinations and what an ideal build for each would look like. Yellow-blue offers the highest point ceiling in the game, with each pair of cards being worth 12 points. If you're getting four or five pairs, this alone can be enough to win. Yellow General and Blue Financier are efficient ways to overlap these coloured cards with things you should be getting naturally anyway. Note that the Financier cost in Utopia may make Blue Financier a bit worse. There are plenty of blue and yellow cards that give blue and yellow multipliers, most of them are cheap to build. High scoring cards like Lunar Base and Alexander's Tomb add valuable points while being part of the multipliers and giving generals. Black-yellow can synergize well, but a lot of the time your blue production will come from yellow cards instead of black cards. Consortium is the ideal starting card for this build. It offers way too much production for its cost. Building gold mine during the first round is an easy way to fill the required yellow cubes for this. Underwater City and Espionage Agency are weaker stars, but can work if you have a blue card that produces yellow cubes. There are plenty of great production cards that complement yellow-blue, try to collect as many as you can. Green Blue offers slightly less points for each pair of cards, but actually counts in its own multiplier, with the card being blue itself. As touched on in the previous video, a lot of blue production comes from black cards, so Black Green and Black Financier can provide good supplementary scoring options. 25 point cards Alpha Centauri and Artificial Sun are good alternatives if you have a lot of production but not a lot of green or blue cards. Blue, green and black multipliers are all good options, while many blue cards will score highly by themselves. Robot Factory is the ideal start for this build, being easy to complete during white production in the first round. The early black production allows cards like Mobile Base and Airborne Laboratory to be built quickly, while the green production will help with cards like Artificial Intelligence, Super Sonar, and Neuroscience. Raiders is the most cost-efficient blue producing card, while any green or blue card with production will also be useful. The last build is a combination of white, black, and yellow. While all these cards are strong, their multipliers aren't usually high enough alone to get a competitive score. White and black cards typically give a lot of production but not a lot of points. You will want to make up for this by overlapping two or three of these cards together. With the high amount of production and hopefully production bonuses, this build can also work focusing more on financier or general multipliers. Mining Asteroid and Crystallium Power Plant would be ideal starts, but all these high producing alternatives are viable. This is a very flexible playstyle with many production and scoring cards that can work well. If you have a high production start, it is more important to secure your scoring avenues earlier. Here are three cards I consider beginner traps. White green does not work anywhere near as well as a combo compared to other colours. It's hard to build up a critical mass of green production through white cards, and if you do, there are rarely enough cheap green cards to make use of a low times 6 multiplier. The 2 crystallium cost on the card is a killer. The amount of times I've seen this card unfinished on a player's board at the end of the game is too high. Financier General can be a very good card, but it depends entirely on player count. In a two-player game where you are winning lots of production bonuses, this can be worthwhile. Picking this in the first round of a four or five player match will rarely work. This is more of a supporting card as opposed to one you base your whole strategy around. The wall falls flat more often than not. No, Mexico is not going to pay for it. You are going to pay for it out of your valuable white cubes. Spending your white cubes on it too early will hinder your production of other colours. It's best used as a third or fourth round option if you already have great white production and not many other scoring avenues. The cost of two generals can also be annoying if you spent too much time on getting white production and nothing else. The great thing about Corruption and Ascension is there are plenty of ways to score points. Early production is rewarded with the large amount of cards you can base a good score around. 
For example, in this game my build was aimed towards green-blue, which I never ended up drafting. I was still able to score over 100 points using the black-green multiplier, as well as high-scoring blue and yellow cards. These are the 5 best production cards that you should strongly consider picking if you see them in the first round. Mining Asteroid gives great production of the most versatile resource. White cubes can be used to produce any colour. It goes well into a white-yellow or white-black build, but can be used for nearly anything. Aim to finish it before production in the second round. Don't be afraid to use the early Crystallium to kickstart your production further. Crystallium Power Plant is the highest producing card in the game, but can be a bait if you don't manage to get a Crystallium early enough. Occult District is the easiest way to get Crystallium, but there are some cheap blue cards that will also do the job. This card will be great in any build. Aim to finish it before production in the second round. If you ever find yourself playing with the Empire Side C, then this is an easy first choice pick. Consortium is the ultimate yellow-blue producer. If you can manage to build a gold mine in the first round, and finish Consortium during black production in the second round, you will be nearly unstoppable. It obviously works well with a yellow-blue build, but can also produce that annoying blue necessary for a white-yellow build. Giant Dam can be used to start a strong blue build, or as part of a black-yellow build. This is a card you should aim to finish before black production in the first round, only needing to recycle one white and two yellow to do so. It combos nicely if you also manage to draft an Airborne Laboratory or Icebreaker in the first round. Pandora's Box is useful in any situation, giving a bit of everything. It is the highest producer in terms of cost. While it's tough to complete in the first round, you should aim to finish it before production in the second round. Corruption is a new element that comes with the expansion. Cards that have Corruption attached will often provide higher than normal production for their cost. If you can overlap corruption, this will result in efficient production. For example, Lawless Zone and Raiders give 4 production for a cost of only 4 cubes. Building against corruption is often a bad idea. Occult District and Robot Factory cancel each other out, requiring an extra card for the same amount of production. In the expansion, it's more important than ever to watch what your opponents are doing. In the base game, if you pass your opponent a useful scoring card, it will usually be worth 15 points or less. Letting your opponents have these huge multiplayer cards can often be worth upwards of 40 points. In lower player count games, it can be just as important to stop your opponents as it is to take a mediocre card for yourself. That's all the tips I have for the Corruption and Ascension expansion of It's a Wonderful World. Check out the base game video guide for more general strategy tips around drafting and building. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. I make strategy videos every week, so if that's the sort of content you enjoy, please consider subscribing. Thanks for watching and good luck.